We're staying in South Africa to find out how an animal we associate with death could be saving lives. Vultures are the most notorious of scavengers. They're one of very few animals to feed on the carcasses of the dead. And this is why scientists think they play a crucial role in the environment, a role that is protecting us from disease. Kerry Volta from South Africa's largest vulture sanctuary and research center is taking biologist Patrick Ie to meet a very special tame vulture. You're going to meet PJ, which stands for Percy Junior. Percy Junior. Percy Junior. Right. Two-year-old PJ broke one of his wings when he was just a baby. He'll never be able to fly, so has become a permanent resident here at the sanctuary. He's sitting on his own. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he looks <laughs> looks quite big up close in person. A little daunting. Is, yeah, daunting. <laughs> I'm just very aware of his presence. This is quite intimidating. He probably can sense that, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a good thing. So if you want to, and if you're brave enough, you can close off first. Okay. Okay. Right. And if he wants to, just pull away from you. You know, if it gets too hard, he just oh, pull away. Getting, getting nipped by a vulture. <laughs> If you want, you can take your cap off and hold it, hold it. And that's it. That <laughs> and then he'll try and put his head into your cap. He is, look, he's pressing a look. <laughs> so that's very much like what they would do in a car. It's really interesting, look. Everything about PJ's anatomy makes him the perfect scavenger. His bald neck and head aren't a fashion statement, but help him stay clean as he digs into a carcass. His large beak is uniquely shaped. You can see how he uses the tip of his yeah. beak. It is just things. like a hook. It's just the tip there. And that was for hooking onto flesh and yanking it. And even his tongue is specially adapted for the task at hand. The tongue has razor sharp edges, almost like sandpaper, and it strips the bone. Nothing about these birds has been left to chance, even down to their strangely flat feet. The reason why they're flat is they're not predatory at all. They're 100% scavengers. So their feet are only good for putting their full weight on the carcass so they can actually rip it open. Vultures cannot kill at all. Surely they can kill small rodents or, you know, they can't kill at all. No, they, they, they don't have that um, ability to. But it's the way a vulture consumes its food that's most interesting to carry, making us rethink how important our relationship is with them. And the best way of seeing this is to invite 200 vultures to lunch. Kerry and Patrick are in the center's viewing hide. On today's menu, a carcass of cow that's died from natural causes, donated by a local farmer it's been rigged with cameras. The idea is to lure in wild vultures and watch them feed. We can see them circling. It's taken just an hour for the vultures to begin to gather. How do they find this food? Vultures have incredible good eyesight. They can see about six kilometers away from them. You'll have, for example, the vulture in the front and he'll be thermaling and he'll find the site. That triggers a vulture behind him to go, oh, hang on, that must be something where that vulture is. After circling for 30 minutes, the first vulture lands and it soon has backup. But nothing happens. For me, that's really surprising. I thought that, you know, as soon as there's a dead carcass or an animal that even looks like it's on the way out, that the vultures would be circling and just, yeah. you know, maybe coming down and pecking them whilst they're still alive. But that's not the case at all. No, it's what Disney likes us to believe. <laughs> but it's not the case at all. They're going to make sure it's really dead and it's kind of past dead. 
Surprisingly, it's another hour before one vulture tentatively makes its move. Ah, one just landed straight on top. Is there some sort of order in terms of which vulture comes in first? It's normally a female. Females are by far more dominant than males. She basically wants to just dominate the entire area. OK, now they're all coming in. Yeah. But look how many of them are. That is just incredible. Wow. The images from the cameras give a unique vulture's eye view of what's happening. You can see how they're using those beaks so effectively. Harry, this is the first time you've seen how they feed from this angle. It's spectacular. It's amazing. And you can see with the long legs how they adapt to really dig inside there. You see how they're using their, just their weight to kind of push themselves and kind of lean against the carcass. Our camera's getting completely swamped. Oh, <laughs> there, oh. there we go. The camera's... Um... Wow. Surprisingly, Kerry's research has shown vultures are vital to our health. Because unlike other animals, when vultures consume meat contaminated with infections like rabies, cholera and anthrax, once eaten, the diseases are completely eradicated. And it's all thanks to the strength of the acid in their stomachs. Well, we've got this acid here, so why don't we actually put that to the test? So if you grab those glasses, okay. I'll grab these ones. Just pop these gloves on. Hydrochloric acid closely matches a vulture's stomach acid. To see just how corrosive it is, Kerry's going to drop in a piece of metal. Let's see what happens. All righty. Ready? Go for it. Bubbling a little bit. That is... Wow! Look at that. That is a very strong reaction. If we replace the hydrochloric acid with actual vulture stomach acid, we'd see the exact same reaction. Yeah. You're looking at a vulture stomach that's a hundred times more acidic than what a human stomach is. So you can really see the power of that inaction right here. Yeah, and what we need to remember as well is, you know, that breaks down diseases, any kind of bacteria, absolutely no issues for a vulture. That is incredible. It's taken just one hour for the vultures to strip the entire carcass along with any diseases that may have been present. This is a completely different scene yeah. to how we left it. Yeah, exactly. And do you also notice the smell's gone? You're right, I can't really smell anything at all, really. I am, I'm genuinely gobsmacked. When we left this carcass here, it was smelling, it was, the belly was <laughs> bloated, and all the organs, all the meat, has been pecked right off those bones. The vultures have not only eaten the virulent strains of bacteria, they've also processed and completely eradicated them from the ecosystem. And this is why we need to change our attitude towards them. They're seen as the undertakers, and, and people don't actually understand their importance. The implications of losing the species is very real, and the effect of that is catastrophic for me, for you, for anyone, really. Without vultures, the spread of fatal diseases to humans increases. When India's vulture population plummeted by 99% over a 10-year period, scientists found the result was over 50,000 extra human deaths from rabies. Which brings home how important it is to rethink our relationship with this life-saving species. <laughs>